This is my home built large format slash industrial 3D printer with a truly quick change tool head system with parallelized printing capability using up to four extruders at the same time. Um, I built it to be, I, I should say I designed it to be as big as it as, as I could and still fit it in, in, in our basement. So it sits uh, just about a square meter on the floor, that's the footprint on the floor, uh, and, and it extends all the way up to, almost all the way up to the basement ceiling. Um, the build volume winds up being uh, two feet by two feet, that's the size of the build plate, by about 30 inches high. It took me a little while to decide on uh, the style of motion system to use for X and Y. I settled on this crossed rail gantry system, which is similar to what Ultimachine Machine does, but it is a bit different. Um, I consider the, the now what's now becoming popular, the Core XY gantry, uh, but because I wanted to have this um, four extruder, I call it the quad tool head, uh, I felt the geometry was favored by the, the cross rail system that I ultimately chose, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. There's two motors for each the x-axis and f another two for the y-axis uh, and, and, and uh, um, each uh, motor uh, system I would say is, is run with two GT, G two GT2 belts. So you have let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight GT2 belts um, moving the gantry in X and Y in total. Uh, there's reasons behind that I won't go into. The build plate sits on a separate assembly that I call the Z-Stage and it makes contact there with three points also kinematically like the tool head, I'll describe that. Um, uh, the, 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 this kinematic way of doing it um, pretty much assures uh, excellent registration and repeatability um, in the case of the build plate, there are three thumb screws. Each thumb screw um, pushes against a um, a ball, which is uh, which is dropped into a slit fit uh, cavity. I would call it, and the the movement of the ball up against the kinematic uh, V groove of the of the of the of the uh, build plate is what uh, allows the tip and tilt adjustment and height adjustment to happen. Um, and and that, that I'm quite happy with that also. The build plate rides on four rails and uh, is actuated by four lead screws, direct drive lead screws uh, from Thomas Linear. They're actually kind of a custom order for the uh, for an exceptionally long lead screw length. Um, four rails might be overkill, uh, but having four lead screws, screws is not. Um, and this is because the, the as built up as meaning bulky and heavy as the C stage is, it's not nearly rigid enough that the load isn't positive positive on each of the four lead screws. Um, that this means that each corner of the Z stage are, are doing something. Uh, you know, e each corner of the lead screw is is being weighed down on 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 the lead screw. Now, if this were a perfectly rigid object. Like like a, a textbook example, you you would say yeah you, you want to support it with with three things or even two things. You don't want it to be over constrained. But this is the real world, and things are flexible. And uh, you know I, I've met so many engineers who say oh there should only be three points of contact. And for things like the build plate with the kinema kinematic support or the tool changer, sure that's that's good. But with um, something where what you want is overall rigidity on a structure which is not Fundament fundamentally perfectly rigid, it, over constraining something is okay and even good. Take the example of an office chair. You might have six legs on it. Um, I, I guess five on the one I'm sitting on right now. Totally over constrained, but there's a good reason for that. You don't want it to tip over. Uh, this very large Z stage is a similar example, I think. The um, I, I mentioned that the, um, the the lead screws are direct drive. They do come from Thomas Linear. Um, I, I, I also had a few iterations of this uh, system before I got it right. 
Uh, originally, I ho had only two motors driving four lead screws with a, a, a cog belt system, a GT2 cog uh, a belt system. And um, it, it, it took a while to figure this out. It, I was getting this uh, banding, Z banding, and it turned out the very, a very, very subtle eccentricity in the way the pulleys were centered on the lead screws was um, was uh, messing with the rate of motion in Z causing this banding. And, um, and, it, and it took going to this rather extreme direct drive motor uh, motor directly attached to the lead screw. That is, the lead screw is the core of the motor uh, solution. And the motors are on top, so the lead screws hang down from the motors. So, uh, and of course, the, uh, the weight of the Z stage is pulling down on those. It's always in tension, not in compression. So the, the uh, obscenely long lead screws um, aren't an issue because they're always in tension. Uh, that was a special order from Thomas Linear. They do do that. They weren't crazy expensive. It was, it was manageable um, and well worth it because I'm really happy with the precision now of my Z stage. The build plate has a, it has a five zone heating system. So this is four 12 inch by 12 inch silicone heater pads plus a nichrome perimeter wire, which I call the perimeter heat to reduce the edge fall off of, of the heat. Uh, it runs on AC power, uh, bang bang control with the sol five solid state relays. And it's fiberglass insulation on the other, s <clears throat> on the other side, along with mylar, uh, gold plated mylar for infrared uh, reflectivity. So I'm trying to keep it as efficient as possible. Each of the uh, 12 inch by 12 inch silicone heater pads is, is, um, is a 750 watt heater. So to prevent my the 15 amp breaker that this is all plugged into from tripping when all the heaters turn on at once, mainly during initial heat up, um, the, the power to the bed is actually uh, turned down uh, with a variac. So uh, the, the, the bed, the heated bed is seeing around 70 volts AC. Uh, it, it's maybe worth noting that I'm using the Duet control board with the Duet 5X expansion board and I'm pretty sure I'm using every single uh, motor and uh, thermal output on that board and almost every single temperature input channel. Uh, you'll notice that there are four doors. Um, this is a simple skin on skeleton kind of construction. Uh, the, my original intent with this wasn't really to have a heated build chamber, it was um, to contain exhaust uh, fumes that might uh, be accumulating from, from these filaments that are all still kind of unknown quantities in, in the realm of, of, uh, of, of health risks. Um, uh, but it does allow quite a bit of self-heating, you know, using the bed as the heat source of that internal environment. and. Um, and, uh, and they're, they're really lightweight. I think they look good. They're simple. Um, they're cheap. Um, uh, it's been suggested to me that I could, I could replace that stuff with the, the, the shrink wrap material with some kind of insulation or something like that. No, it's good. It's, 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 it's clear. You can see into it. You don't have to open it to see it. Um, I like the doors. Uh, the lights, the built-in lights actually come from Ikea. These are these Yanzio uh, flexible gooseneck LED lights that are kind of neat. I modified them and zip tied them to the frame. They run to a separate uh, switch for the light uh, on the control panel. And also, I, I, because this thing is running like, you know, sometimes days at a time, I was a bit concerned with uh, things like fire safety. It's in my basement. It's running when we're not home, when my husband and I are not home. We have cats at home to worry about. Uh, so there's two levels a fire safety built into it. Um, so one, the, there's there's the, the the first order defense. The first line of defense is is the automatic shutdown system, which is powered just by an Arduino Uno. What what this is is a system of smoke sensors, one on each extruder on each of the tool heads that I have, and also scattered around key places where the electronics are built into the frame. And there's one over the <laughs> the cheapo Chinese variac um, because who knows with that. Um, 
And so, so if any one of those uh, detects smoke, the Arduino, which is powered by a separate power supply uh, going into a different, uh, you know, wall outlet, uh, it turns off a master solid state relay that the entire rest of the machine is connected to. So everything on this machine, except for that Arduino, is coming through one relay. And if, if smoke is detected anywhere, the Arduino on the separate power system shuts off that relay, um, hopefully nipping the problem in the bud if a problem ever were to arise. Um, but just to be really sure, I also found you can get automatic fire extinguishers. There's this neat one called Haven. Um, so it's just a fire extinguisher that is intended to go into a ceiling and if and if the temperature gets high enough it it, it turns on uh, so i also have one of those built into the upper part of the frame you'll notice uh, one unfortunate addition which is these springs that are attached to the tool head um, it, it took i mentioned i think i mentioned it it took a few iterations of the motion system to get that just right to get the motion system just right but even now, there's a tiny bit of sag in these steel uh, 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 rails. And so when the tool head is right in the center of the bed, it's a bit too close to the bed. And it turned out I couldn't really print on the entire build surface um, because the, the distance from the nozzle to the uh, build surface was varying too much just from the sag in the motion system. I just like a week ago, a friend of mine uh, at work said, oh, why don't you do mesh bed leveling? And, and now in hindsight, I should probably look into getting that working. But my, my fix in the meantime, uh, after I initially commissioned this printer, which is what you see here, is to put these springs, um, run these very ugly springs down to the uh, tool head to pull up on it, um, which is actually pretty effective at compensating for the sag more in the center where it's important than on the edges where um, where the system is more stiff. Uh, the, the changeable tool heads that I mentioned, it really is quite quick and simple and repeatable. I have, so far I have two single extruder tool heads, one with a really big nozzle for giant prints, one with a, I think it's a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, one with a smaller 0.5 millimeter nozzle. And, and I built this uh, quad, what I call the quad tool head, which has four extruders on it. This is not intended for multi-material printing. It's intended to print four things, four of the same thing in parallel for kind of production style work. Um, this works, I've tested it. Um, I, there was a lot of learning along the way, but, and, and special configuration with the Duet controller, but it works. I haven't uh, been making as much use of it yet as I hope to, but I think that'll change. Um, but the, the quick change system is, is nice. So I, I demonstrate that here. Uh, what it is is, is uh, four, what you'd call four V-blocks, which aren't actually V-blocks. They're, they're parallel pins that um, balls register into. And this makes six points of contact, point points of contact with, uh, between the motion system and the tool head that you want to use for a nearly perfect registration that's completely repeatable. If I, I can change from one tool head to the other and the nozzles are at exactly the right height. Um, the, the, these tool heads have their own um, leveling uh, built into the kinematic system for a one-time leveling. So that if I build a new tool head and I start using it for the first time, the first time I use it, I have to level it relative to the rest of the build plate but once I do that, I can just change them in and out and it, it just it just works. It's quite nice. There are five spool holders uh, and, and, they, and so we can carry uh, three kilogram spools, um, five three kilogram spools all at once, uh, which for the for large machines, I find it's just worth it to stick with the uh, three kilogram spools. Finally, the, the kind of the really one of the parts I'm especially proud of is the touchscreen uh, so, and the whole control panel really. So the beautiful Duet and Duet 5X expansion boards are on display behind a clear plastic window, an access hatch you can get to to, to, uh, to do maintenance or whatever. And then the touchscreen 
is a third party touchscreen that uh, works with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so there's a Raspberry Pi behind that. The Raspberry Pi is pointing, is, is in kiosk mode. So it boots up, goes to full screen mode with the web browser and automatically points to the uh, web browser that the Duet, uh, the Duet uh, controller is, is broadcasting. So it, it's kind of strangely uh, indirect because it's all wireless connections, even though it's built into the same machine. But, um, but I have this cool vertical touchscreen interface for the Duet control board, which is fully functional, as well as, of course, everywhere else in the house because it's actually, um, you know, it's on my local area network. Um, there's also a switch on the control panel for the lights and for, the, uh, for an exhaust fan that goes through a giant HEPA filter, which I actually really haven't been using. Uh, as I said earlier, I've been, I was a little bit worried about exhaust fumes, but I don't know. Um, my notion here is that this whole thing is supposed to be open source. I published, I kind of just dropped all the design files messily into a directory on my website, which is linked below. I, I, the, I have build notes and sort of instructions and the bill of materials. The notes are incomplete and there may be some issue with the, uh, issues with the, the parts files for the 3D printed parts and things like that. And there are some custom machine parts too, not too many. Um, but if anyone wants any of that or to use it as a starting point for their own big machine or just for the ideas, it is available. I, I, I you know, I would like other people to, to make use of it. Um, oh, and I forgot, almost forgot to mention that the uh, control panel, some of the parts on this machine are printed and are very large printed parts. So I got to a certain point in the machine's construction where the control panel had to be mocked up temporarily holding everything in place with cardboard until the machine was actually in a state that it could print its own uh, control panel, which happened in two giant pieces that interlock. And there are other uh, ceiling gussets and things around the doors that had to be printed on this machine itself uh, because they're just very large pieces. And so that's kind of cool. Um, and that's it. That's my large format printer. Don't have a cool name for it. I just call it the, the big printer in the basement. <laughs>